This week in Nerf, we've got recalled flywheel cages, brand new motors, and more new blasters available in stores. I'm Jangular, and this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Now, you may notice next to me is, well, not the news, but Brett, who sometimes wears a beret. Hello. And he's gonna he's gonna hang out with us today and share his thoughts on some of these uh, topics we're talking about because I thought it'd be fun to change things up a little. So thank you for being with us. Thanks for being with me. Anytime. <laughs> Let's get on into it. First up, like I said, uh, there are flywheel cages that have potentially been recalled. These are the Eclipse cages, which are now available for purchase, and that is. Pretty awesome because these are super high crush cages that are capable of 180 plus FPS uh, in the right system with the right motors and all of that. Now, important to note is when these first hit, there was a problem with some of the fitting and there was a post saying that some of these may be recalled and uh, have to be re-drilled or have the holes for the screw ports re-drilled, I believe was the issue. And that's... Good and bad. Good in the sense that I like that they're taking responsibility for it and saying, hey, let's fix this. I don't want people to have to deal with that. But bad in the sense that it wasn't caught before release. And uh, I just kind of wanted to get your opinion as well on the idea that we, I think, now have our first recalled mm. aftermarket Nerf product. Definitely shows how far we've come. It's like not everything's perfect. Maybe showing that for the first time, okay. Sometimes, yeah, we make mistakes and don't always catch them immediately, but maybe, yeah, it was a good thing that they did catch it now. You wonder, I don't know totally how everything gets tested. I'm sure everyone does it differently depending on who, like what company it is or what they're, what they're selling, depending on, you know, flywheel cages versus 3D printed parts, who they test it with first, but uh, yeah, so maybe, maybe this just wasn't caught immediately this time and it usually is. It is interesting. That is, I think it's a really good point you bring up about how far we've come. And that is something to really think about that, you know, three years ago, I wouldn't have thought we would have people, you know, mass producing products on the level we have now and motors being bought and created in such massive quantities. And ship them worldwide. Exactly. The option available. Yeah. It's really, really a cool thing that uh, I think you touched on, despite there being some bad to this in that there was a problem with the the flywheel cages to start uh, and normally i would have the link down below but i actually wasn't able to find the post for the recall for the issues maybe it was taken down because they resolved them and got in contact with the few people that had bought them before they caught the issue uh, maybe that's why i can't find it but regardless it was something that did pop up it seems to be resolved now anyone who purchases one now i believe will have their cages fixed before they get to them. Uh, the retailers, I believe, will be uh, fixing the issues or they're being sent back to OFP Phil for their issues. So if you wanted to buy an Eclipse cage and you were concerned, don't worry about it now. It is an issue that was resolved and kudos to them for getting on it as quick as they did because this is a step forward in terms of technology for Nerf getting those 180 to 200 FPS marks with flywheels kind of huge pretty impressive but you need the motors to get you there and that that brings us to our second topic which is the Cronus 2 motors these are new motors that were just announced on the OFP page that are going to be Titan motors as some of you may know by the Cronus name which means they'll be sold through monkey mods in early January these are 180 size motors with splined shafts and that's great for people that have concerns about flywheels walking off as some people have had issues with the splines really help grab into the flywheel so if you're concerned about that that's a plus some of the other notable aspects of this of these motors is that uh, you can use them on 2s or 3s at 2s they're giving you 35,000 rpms with torque between neo hellcats and fangs that's significant uh, right off the bat on 2S, they also pull 54 amps at stall, which is a lot. We'll get into that in a moment. On 3S, however, they're hitting 53,000 RPMs with higher torque than even Neo Hellcats on 4S. Monster, basically. The, it's what's needed to be able to power the Eclipse system to really push those darts through the high crush 
and all of that necessary without uh, dropping off and being able to hit that critical mass or critical FPS. Um, the problem with these is they draw 80 amps of current. It's a lot. It's a lot. Neo Hellcats, a pair of Neo Hellcats draws 80 amps at stall. So two of these equals four Neo Hellcats and we have, what, 21 amp switches available to us? Yes. So like eight times what a 21 amp switch is rated for. Uh, you're going to want to run MOSFETs, a MOSFET with this, without a doubt. Just do it. Be safe. Uh, that is actually one of the concerns for these motors is that they draw so much that are they safe? What do we need to run with them? And, uh, you know, are we going to find that point where we all of a sudden start having issues with not being able to actually get these motors to function properly if people are not using them absolutely correctly and stalling them out too long? But... Uh, what do you think about something so powerful compared to what we have? Well, if the numbers like that scare you a bit, you are not alone. I am standing right here. It's definitely not something you'd want to consider for your first mod. And because there's so much available now for people to try out. And when you see, oh, flywheel modification stuff. And this comes and this is maybe the most recent thing you see as a result. Make sure it's clear then that that's you need some experience. And as you're saying, MOSFETs. I'm sure not everyone's comfortable with doing that. Doesn't mean that it's inherently hard, but doesn't mean that everyone's comfortable with it. So knowing what you're going to do and planning it out very carefully will be very important. So I'll just say from example, someone like me, I'm not experienced enough to know how to do that. So I would definitely want to take steps or watch other people first in order to become a little more comfortable. So it's very cool that we can do that. It's just that making sure that it's advertised to the right people and I'm sure there are plenty of people who are really looking forward to that, which is which is good. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't really be releasing it, right? Uh, but making sure not everyone is trying to jump on it because it's the newest and hottest thing out there. Because everyone loves their top tier blasters, right? Everyone loves the, what's the newest thing that can shoot the hardest? How can I be the best nerfer possible? This might be a way you can be the best nerfer possible, right? But... You can get those should, numbers. But should you be? Yeah, you can get numbers. Are numbers everything? No. That's, yeah. That's, that, that's some good points that you definitely want to do your research. That is really, really important. And thankfully, with all of the amazing resources our community has available, people have already made some good guides on how to do MOSFETs, how to solder them into your, your blasters, and how to get that all set up and done. I know if I'm going to run any of these, or even Neo Hellcats, I'm going to be running a MOSFET. I need to learn how to do that, so I will be learning how to do that. And I think that's a great point to do your research. Make sure it's actually what you need, actually what you want, and that you are capable of making it work properly. Because yeah. safety is really important. I, I, don't, I don't want to start seeing people running things that they shouldn't be, and then having just malfunctions with their blaster that lead to issues that uh people didn't didn't anticipate because they didn't fully do their research and understand what they're getting into yeah. um respecting your batteries storing them properly all those things that you just need to have on a side note and if you're capable of doing that then good but if you're not comfortable with that then yeah don't jump on it just yet work your way up now despite all those safety concerns and warnings that we just talked about these are an interesting addition to our motor library. And I think it's cool that people are trying to innovate, 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 and do cool and unique and new things. So take, take all of this into account as well. Now, with that said, let's get into something that uh, Beret has potentially a little more vested interest in, and that's fun new blasters. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tri-Break and the Surge Fire recently became available in Canada, and the Tri-Break is actually available on Amazon.com now for those U.S. residents that want one. Uh, that was actually found by LLF2, who found that Amazon link and posted it to Reddit. Now, I really am curious, as someone that loves to run Fun Blasters, to another person that loves to run Fun Blasters, what are your thoughts on the Tri-Break and the Surge Fire? Mm. Well, let's see. The Surge Fire is, I guess, it doesn't look like it's that bad, but people have had the Roto Fury for long enough and can make it do similar things. With more power. With more power. It has a few less shots then as a result. 
but the option has kind of been already available for people who are really interested in that concept, I want to say. It's true. Uh, it doesn't look like it's bad. Uh, it looks like it performs as necessary. Uh, the, the pump in the front looks fine, comfortable enough. I, I can't say from experience, but it looks it looks okay. Uh, but again, yeah, then that 15 darts, why is that so attractive compared to another drum fed blaster like the, once again, the Ma uh, Magnum Super Drum? Yeah. You know, even though it's got the back. It's so hard to beat. It's, it really is so hard to beat for drum. a scavenging blaster. Yeah, So when because that's what it kind of will be. It's true. You reload it on the fly. You're meant to reload it on the fly. There's no there's another way you're going to really reload those. Right. It doesn't make sense if you have like a drop. I'm not going to drop out. They did make them available, but mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really want to carry yeah. a drum well, for the, the size of my for torso. For the surge fire. Like what? Oh, the what surge fire. What would that even do? Yeah, no, oh, like, yeah, no you have to. You literally, yeah. there is no option. So I, and I don't know how much those cost. Is another note. Uh, I'll what put the cost? I'll put the price up on the screen, but actually that's I, a hefty price. I probably won't because we don't know what they cost in terms of U.S. dollars. We've only seen them in Canada still at the moment, so uh, I'll put it down in the info when we get the U.S. price. Uh, Seems like it's an okay blaster if you're looking for that kind of function. Not like it's got some early signs of issues, but maybe you've already got that blaster figured out if you're looking to run something that the Searchfire yeah. does. Yeah. The tri break. Hmm. That could be fun. That's, but it's uh, once again maybe something that's outclassed in other mega blasters already. But if you're looking to pocket something that's a mega mega sized blaster that's just really quick to use, that maybe you could even cut off that front part because that looks like it's just for aesthetic. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> but to me, I think that it's front super part fun. is that's exactly what, that's what completes it. That's 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 totally the only thing that it. makes me want that blaster mm -hmm. is that front. Otherwise, part. it's a big shock with with three barrels. Yeah. It shouldn't. If, if you looked at it a little bit, you probably figured that out. Uh, but that might not be a bad thing, especially if megas do something special at your games. That's true. Uh, that's that's great because that's also something that's. Oh, I was gonna say pocketable, but I'm not sure how. How it's, big it is it's compared probably, to your pocket. Yeah, probably bigger than most pockets. I don't have big pockets. So, yeah, that might be something you can carry on you instead of something like a Magnus or a Roto Fury. Maybe those aren't the best Mega Blasters to think of on the spot. But, there, yeah, there, there could be some fun had with this. But for its current listing on Amazon, which is probably, what, just under 30 bucks? Just under 30 bucks. I would wait and see if someone else posts it for less because something tells me that's not its retail price. And that has happened before when a blaster pops up early and you've only got one source. How else can you check it? Unless Nerf has officially made that's, an announcement or you confirm that on other sites. That's true. And well, thinking about it, it may be its MSRP because of the amount of plastic on this blaster. They do have to have that front shroud now that I'm, I'm thinking about it. First, I, I you know, was thinking that's way too expensive for this. We were talking about it. And, and now I'm just realizing... Hasbro does have a plastic tax. Like, if they use more than is necessary, they're going to make you pay for it. Whether you want to or not. You're going to pay for it. It's, you're paying for that little bit of extra plastic with a premium for that fun function, which kids will love, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I certainly want to just run around with it and just flip it up. Ah, I love the sledge fire. Like, that's just fun. You're talking to me. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's just so much fun. It's so satisfying. I feel like Very that's... satisfying. That's where the appeal is for this blaster. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether or not that's worth $28, yeah. I'm uncertain. Would, if you really want one now, and you want to show the world that you have the tri-break early, go ahead. Power to you. <laughs> but the... Uh, what was it? Like I mean, other new blasters have come out recently in the past weeks. And have been reasonably priced compared to that. And others have been a little questionable. So if you don't need it now, I would suggest waiting. But if you do need it now, I guess the option is available for you. Well put. All right. Now this week, we don't have a mod of the week. That's because we have a guest of the week who is Beret. <laughs> I'm a mod of the week. <laughs> Actually, we do have a video of the week, though. And uh, that's, that's going to be Beret's video of Fielding Nitro Lap 3 because... I think it is such a fun idea. We've featured Bray's work before on the channel, and I wanted it again because I love the way he has fun with things, the way he does his his games, and and just you get to the core of the fun aspect of Nerf, and this is really one of those things. If you don't know what Nitro is, Nitro is the you're lucky, <laughs> you're lucky person. <laughs> That's but what you've we... also lived under a rock because Nerf is 
kind of true. shoved it down people's that's, that's throat. True. Like, look at these. They, look at uh, these Hot Wheels. I mean, look at these uh, Nitro cars. Yeah, no, not Hot Wheels. Not Hot Wheels no, no, at no, all. No, 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 <clears throat> no, no, no. Not until they acquire that license, at least. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, basically, yeah. Brett runs around and tries to tag people with the Nerf Blasters that fire foam cars. And it is entirely way too amusing to watch him try to tag people with these abysmally performing blasters and these cars that just bloop and don't go anywhere. Uh, so just, just, I want you all to take a look at Brett's channel because he is a fantastically entertaining person. I'm super glad to have him here and I want you all to experience his channel and his style, which is very different from a lot of other people and has its own flavor to it that I really enjoy. So, uh, <laughs> I uh, I did not ask for this. Uh, <laughs> he has no clue. I do really enjoy fielding stupid stuff. That's the best way I could put it. But the fun part has been very important to me, especially recently. And as we talk about some specifics of the new flywheels that can, uh, well, they weren't flywheels, but the new <laughs> the new systems in your blasters that can make it perform better than anything before. We have Nerf snipers nowadays. That is not a joke term anymore, right? Nerf snipers are a thing. Uh, something we laughed at years and years ago. So strange, having to use an actual sight on blasters like the caliber and yeah, like finding you actual can, advantages. If you want to do it, you can do it. But what I've really found enjoyable about the hobby and what I really kind of grew up on, which I like to keep, keep doing, is just that silly aspect. There are plenty of games that all... I'll do fun stuff and also be, you know, playing competitively and, and serious enough. But I think if I if I take myself way too seriously all the time, I'll kind of lose what brought me into the hobby and what drew my interest in the first place. And especially because not everyone who plays is the same age. Everyone comes from different backgrounds, different talents. That's kind of what I want people to see me doing with the hobby so that they're not thinking that, oh, this person is so serious about that. You can be serious about Nerf. But don't take Nerf too seriously. That is a Pontatoes quote. Best quote I've ever heard about this hobby. I like it. Yeah, because you are, I mean, it's pretty serious right it's here. Clearly, right? yes. But does that mean that you're super, super serious when you take that out to the field? No, I mean, I like to have fun. No. Yeah. So that's what I've enjoyed doing. And as soon as I heard Nitro was as ridiculous as it sounded, I thought that some people were going to run them in games and not just cut up shells for them. So when I didn't see anyone doing that, I felt it was important to try. He's doing the community a service. Yeah, so you don't have to. Yeah. But if you do, please contact me. I want to know your story. There you go. So go check that out. I'm going to have that video probably here. On I normally... my face. Yeah, sure. We'll put it on his face. Why not? Uh, <laughs> that's going to do it for this week. Actually, go check that video out. You can click it right over here if you want to. Thank you again to Brett, who sometimes wears a beret for coming on over and doing this video with me. Let me know what you thought of having a guest to do the news with. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you think there could be different ways to do it? Let me know. Let me know what you thought of all the stuff in today's video as well. The Eclipse cages, the Cronus motors, the new blasters, uh, fielding Nerf Nitro. Let me know what you thought. I'd love to hear from all of you. And go check out Brett's channel. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular. This is Brett, who sometimes wears a beret. Hi. And I'll see you next time.